Good morning Ruby, Sigrid and Angus on this beautiful sunny morning in Bury. Today in the chapter Sophie's Tom something very special happens for Sophie and there's a clue in the picture at the start of the chapter. Can you think where, what might be happening for Sophie? Well I'll tell you. Every day of the two years that the twins had been at school, Sophie had always gone to walking down with her mother or, if the weather was horrible, going in the car. But now, for the first time, she would not walk or ride home again at quarter to nine in the morning to help with the washing up. Instead, she was a schoolgirl herself. I thought you might have guessed that from the uniform. The day hadn't started that well though. Why, said Sophie, do I have to wear a skirt? I don't think she likes wearing skirts. It's part of the school uniform, her mother said. You can't go dressed as you like. That's a bit different to school in Sweden, isn't it, Ruby and Sigrid? Sophie's usual clothes consisted of an old blue jumper, if you remember, with a name written on, old jeans, and most of the time, some Wellingtons so she could splash in puddles and do all sorts of exciting things in the garden. But this morning she stood in front of the looking glass, the mirror, and saw a distinctly grumpy figure wearing a grey pleated skirt and under a maroon cardigan a grey shirt with a striped tie. It was Sophie herself. These clothes are mouldy, stupid and acid, she said. Do you remember that thing she says when she's cross? Well, I think you look very smart, said her mother. You look very smart, her father said when she came down to breakfast. The twins said nothing, because they'd been told to say nothing. But they looked at Sophie and looked at one another and grinned. Sophie eyed their grey trousers, darkly. It's a pity you're not Scottish boys, she said. Why? Well, then you'd have to wear skirts. They do, you know. Aunt Al told me. When they arrived at school, Matthew and Mark galloped off without a backward look. Sophie and her mother made their way to the reception classroom. Here they found a number of children who were starting school for the first time. Some were a bit upset and one boy was crying really loudly. Sophie's mother glanced anxiously at her, but her daughter's honorary action was to pull down her dark eyebrows in a frown of disapproval. Let's hang up your coat, said her mother. There are some pegs in the corridor outside. We'll see if we can find yours. If there was one word that Sophie was confident of reading, it was her own name. So she had no trouble spotting it. Beside each, peg's, each, sorry, beside each peg, a child's name was printed on a picture of an animal. There was a lion. Can you see it? An elephant. Uh, I don't know what that is. A parrot, a rabbit, and what do you think Sophie's was? Uh, was it sure? Yeah, Sophie's picture was of a black and white cow. Goodness me, said Sophie softly. Sorry, goodness me, said Sophie softly. They knew. Sophie's mother felt that this might be a good moment to slip away and leave her to it. So she kissed Sophie and said, See you later. Alligator said Sophie in her usual no-nonsense way, the mother said, in a while, and Sophie said, crocodile, and Sophie plodded back into the classroom. It just so happened that the reception class teacher was also beginning her first term at school, so all the children, new and old alike, were strange to her. Mostly, they were strange to Sophie too. She sat where she'd been told to and stared stonily at the others. Suddenly, her expression changed from one of suspicion to active dislike because sitting on the other side of the room was a pretty, pretty little girl with golden hair done in bunches that were tied with a ribbon. Can you guess? Yes, it was Dawn. Sophie, remember, had met her once before when Dawn had been invited to Sophie's house to play and had deliberately squashed one of Sophie's largest wood lice. In return, Sophie, you remember, had retaliated and she'd been very naughty 
and jumped up and down on Dawn's toy pink pony called Twinkle Toes until it was a dirty squash lump whose toes would never twinkle again. Now, unaware of Sophie's glare, Dawn chatted brightly with her friends until the teacher called for quiet. Then she told the new children that each of them would have an older child who was already in school in that class to look after them until they knew their way around school. Sophie said, well, I know my way around school. Do you? said the teacher. How clever of you. Let me see, you are Sophie. How clever of you, Sophie. I expect you have an older sister in one of the other classes. No. An older brother then? No. Sophie loved guessing games. Go on, she said, try again. She's got two older brothers piped up the twit. Sorry, piped up Dawn. They're twins. You've done me off, Paul. Look away. <laughs> Sophie glowered furiously at her, but the teacher only said, It's Dawn, isn't it? Well, yes, you seem to know all about Sophie's family, so you can look after her. Oh, no, said Sophie, folding her arms and picking out her lower lip. While Dawn's smug smile vanished abruptly. And there's Sophie looking grumpy, and there's Dawn looking a bit worried. When the bell rang, sorry, when the bell rang, I'm not doing well this morning, am I, folks? When the bell rang for morning break, the teacher made sure that each new child had its escort before letting them go. Dawn, carrying a new blue pony, stood nervously before Sophie. Do you want to go to the toilet, she said. No, said Sophie. She did, actually. She was desperate. But she had already determined that she would do nothing that Dawn suggested. Out in the playground, the whole school ran screaming and yelling and skipping and jumping, and the twins came to make sure that Sophie was not unhappy. They found her standing in a corner, glowering at the madding crowd. Nearby, but not too near, stood her mind at Dawn. You OK? shouted Mark. And, you all right? yelled Matthew. Sophie nodded. Her expression did not change. The twins looked at Dawn, who was anxiously clutching the blue pony. What do you want? they said together. I'm supposed to be looking after her, Dawn said. She your friend? said Matthew to Sophie. No. Do you want her hanging around? said Mark. No. Well, get lost, they both shouted, and off Dawn ran. Well, that was a bit mean, wasn't it? Sophie began to jig from foot to foot and her brothers regarded her with practised eyes. Do you want to go somewhere? asked Mark. Yes. Do you know where to go? asked Matthew. Yes. Well, go then, they both said. And off Sophie ran to the toilet. Now, one of the bad things that had worried Sophie about going to school had been having to eat school lunches, especially pilchers in tomato sauce, which she hated. So at lunchtime, she plodded into the hall, feeling sure that today of all days, her first day at school, it was bound to be pilchards. To her great surprise and delight, it was sausages, chips and baked beans, followed by apple crumble and custard, both favourites of hers. And not even having to sit next to Dawn stopped her from enjoying her lunch very much indeed. From then on, everything did seem to improve at school. For in the afternoon, they drew pictures to take home and show their parents. Now, Sophie loved drawing. She worked her way with her coloured felt pens, dark head bent, tongue sticking out to concentrate. And all the other children in the class drew pictures of their mothers or fathers or something, something in their house. But Sophie's was quite different. Can you guess what she might have drawn a picture of? What a lot of things you're putting in your picture, Sophie, said the teacher when she came round to have a look. What is it meant to be? Sophie looked at her. Can't you see? She said. Well, I wasn't quite sure. I'll show you then, said Sophie. And with a red felt pen, she wrote across the top of the picture in big wobbly capitals. Can you see it? My farm. That's very good, Sophie, said the teacher. Fancy you being able to write like that and spell correctly too. You're a bright one. Do you think you'll be a writer when you grow up? Of course not, said Sophie. I'm going to be a farmer.
what have you got there, Sophie? Said her mother when she came to collect her. Sophie was carrying her drawing rolled into a scroll with an elastic band round it. I need a picture, she said. Can I see it? Well, when I get home, Mummy, said Sophie. It's a present, you see, for you, Daddy, Matthew and Mark as well, I suppose. What's it of? asked the twins. My farm. Your toy farm? No, oh, my real one that I'm going to buy with my farm money when I'm a grown-up lady. At home, Sophie would not undo the scroll, but waited till her father had come home from work. Then the whole family gathered round the kitchen table for the exhibition of Sophie's picture, the result of her labours on her first day at school. Gosh, that's very good, Sophie, said her father. My farm, eh? No, mine, said Sophie. I was just reading what you'd written. Well, I think it's beautiful, said her mother. But the twins were not prepared to leave it at that. They knew all about the animals that Sophie proposed to have. And they demanded to be shown the whereabouts in the picture of Blossom, the cow, April and May the hens, Shorty, the Shetland pony, and Measles, the pig. There did seem, however, to be a great many more animals in this picture than these. And if you look carefully at the bottom of the page there, that's the picture that Sophie drew. It's, it's quite accomplished for a little five-year-old, I think. She obviously likes drawing like you and you, Ruby and Sigrid and Agnes do. There were dozens, in fact. Although it was anyone's guess which of the squiggly little figures were the cows, which hens or horses or pigs. What are those? asked Matthew, pointing to a group in one corner. Pigs, of course, said Sophie. Mark said, well, I think they look more like sheep. Sophie's father said, Sophie's an impressionist and it's a great picture. But you do seem to have got an awful lot of animals for your farm, considering that you're planning to begin with just five. How will you manage that? I'll breed them, of course, said Sophie. Farm animals have lots of babies. I should have thought you'd know that. Oh, yes, how silly of me, said her father. What's that little black thing here? asked her mother, pointing. I'll see if I can find the little black thing. There we are. That's the little black thing. Can you guess what it is? Obviously, Sophie's mum wasn't sure. That's Tom, said Sophie. Your cat? Yes. And what's this brown thing over here? That's there. You can't see it's brown because it's a black and white picture, but it's a brown thing. And uh, Mark said, it's like a heap of something. It is a heap of something, said Sophie. It's the dung heap. Look, said Matthew, there's a pair of legs sticking out of the top of it, as though someone has fallen in it head first. They have, said Sophie. That's Dawn. She's cheeky, isn't she, Sophie? Drawing a picture of her father and putting her, the, the girl in that she doesn't like falling in the dung, the dung heap. Anyway, that's the end of that chapter. And uh, Sophie continues to go to school and makes a new friend in the next chapter. So she's a little bit happier about life at school. And uh, we'll read that another day. So Grandma will say bye-bye. Enjoy the sunshine if it's sunny in Sweden. Grandma will enjoy the sunshine here with Grandad and Rachel. And we miss you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.